welcome to my channel. My name is Maria del Martin. As you know, I started this course about sustainable development with all the things I learned at university because I consider that sharing knowledge is one of the best ways to shift a better world for us. So if you have a question, please leave a comment in the below part and I will be happy to have a conversation with you. And if you want to know more about me, you can check my Instagram or my website or my LinkedIn. So let's get started. Today we're going to talk about what would happen in the future and we have four types predictions, scenarios, projections and speculations and I'm going to explain you with a graph in this graph we can notice a relation between uncertainty and causality so to start we are going to talk about a scenario what's a scenario? Scenarios are ideas about what would happen in the future a wish to see what would happen in the future and we have like a model to determine the scenarios about what would happen to know what would happen in the future and this the millennium assessment scenarios and i'm going to explain you with an example of these millennium assessment scenarios first of all we have to determine the policies or the areas that we are want to know what would happen in the future and in this case is agriculture and health then we have to determine the scenarios that we want to know what would happen in a specific scenario a good example is start with a poor world and a rich world so inside of this type of scenarios we have two scenarios which is rural area and urban area so to start for a rural area from a poor world there are many possibilities that in the future people from rural areas don't have access to a quality of public health so there are many problems with that then we have the urban area from a poor world that maybe could have more updated technologies than in the rural area then we have the rural area from a rich world and we know that there are many engineers or people that are developing technology to, be, to have more precision in surgeries or maybe the technology could be implemented in the future in rural areas from a rich world and then we have the urban area from a rich world that maybe there is not necessary that a doctor make a surgery because maybe in the future could appear robots that could make surgeries then we have the agriculture and then we have in the rural area for example from a poor world a machine that maybe generates erosion, soil erosion, that we know that is a big problem. And in the urban area from a poor wall, maybe we could have better machines that can improve the techniques that people already have. Now, from a rural area, from a rich wall, we can notice that maybe could appear greenhouses. And from a urban area, from a rich wall, we can notice that in these greenhouses could exist robots that can make the process, the necessary process that plants need. So another type of scenario that we can have is the SRES scenarios. And I'm going to show you an image to explain this type of scenarios. First of all, we have like a tree to determine or to separate the areas to have a better explanation and first of all we have like A1 which is a mix between economic and global aspect and what does it mean? what does it mean letter A1? it's a world of rapid economic growth and rapid introductions of new and more efficient technologies then we have a mix between economic and regional, which is letter A2. In letter A2, we have a very heterogeneous world with an emphasis on family values and local traditions. Then we have letter B1, which is a mix between global and environmental aspects. And in this part, we have a world of dematerialization and introduction of clean technologies. Then we have letter B2, which is a mix between regional and environmental, and it's a world of emphasis in local solutions to economic and environmental sustainability. 
The next part to determine what would happen in the future is a projection. A projection is when you are certain about what would happen in the future. You have like data to notice what would happen or to determine what would happen in the future, but you are not sure about that causality of the activities that can appear in the future. And why? is because projections has more influence in data from the past. A good example of projections could be the RCP. RCP imagine possible situations in the present to determine what would happen in the future. A good example could be the global mean surface temperature change that the Earth suffer nowadays. For example, we have a scenario which is the RCP 2.6. In this scenario, we reuse our organic wastes, we make compost, we don't use public transport or taxis or cars, we just use a bicycle and we are conscious about global warming and this type of things. So in this scenario, in the future, the likely range about the global mean surface temperature could be 0.4 to 1.6 and if we are in the older scenario, which is the RCP 8.5, which is a scenario which we don't are conscious about anything, we just still using cars, public transport, we don't use bicycles, or maybe we don't reuse organic waste, we don't make compost, the growing population, and this type of things generates that in the future the likely range of the global mean surface temperature could be 1.4 to 2.6. So there is a projection to think about what would happen if we have these actions or activities in the present to determine what would happen in the future. So the conclusion of projection is that you have many ways, maybe two, maybe three, I don't know. So if you choose the first way, you arrive to a place. If you choose the second way, you arrive to another place. If you choose the third way, you can arrive in another place. So there are many possibilities that you have in the present and if you choose which activities you are going to do, the result in the future will change. So that is called a projection. Another model that we have inside of projections is the Shared Socioeconomic Pathways. SSP, which is a complement for RCPs, and it introduces five new socioeconomic narratives. First of all, we have the SSP Wealth, which is a projection that has low challenges. It's like the sustainable way, but it's a little bit too topic to find this type of pathways. So in this shared socioeconomic pathway, you don't have socioeconomic challenges for adaptation and for mitigation. In the SSP2, which is the moderate pathway because it has intermediate challenges, has an intermediate challenge for adaptation and for mitigation. Then we have the SSP3, which is a rocky road. It's difficult to achieve your goal in this type of shared socioeconomic pathway because you have challenges for adaptation and challenges for mitigation. Then we have the SSP4 which is a regional pathway because it has a dominance in adaptation challenges. And finally, we have the SSP5, which is taking the fast road. You don't have challenges for adaptation, but you have big challenges for mitigation. So the best projection that you can find in this model is the SSP2, which has intermediate challenges for adaptation and for mitigation. Then we have speculation. And what is a speculation? A speculation is when you are uncertain about what would happen in the future and you don't know anything about that causality. And then we have predictions. Predictions is the opposite of speculations because prediction is when you are certain about what would happen in the future and you know that causality. So you are have many aspects to take in consideration to determine that you are sure about what would happen in the future. To sum up, we have four types to determine what would happen in the future. If you are not certain about what would happen in the future, but you know that causality is a scenario. If you are uncertain about what would happen in the future 
and you don't know the causality, it's a speculation. If you're certain about what would happen in the future, and you don't know the causality, it's a projection. And if you are certain about what would happen in the future, and you know the causality, it's a prediction. So I hope you found this video interesting, and if you think this video can help another person, please share it. And remember, if you have a question, please leave a comment in the below part and I will be happy to answer you. So, see you in the next video and bye!